Welcome to the Traveler's Guide, Episode 1. In this episode, we're going to be covering uh, from the Seaside Runes, all the way through the Bridge of Sacrifice, the Demi-Human Forest, the Ailing Village, and then up to the Aratus' Rise. I probably mispronounced that terribly, but you know. Uh, the main goal is just kind of develop a feel for who the Demi-Humans are and what their kind of role in society is as well as kind of starting to see a little bit of the Flame of Frenzy, and then just uh, we're exploring the um, the Weeping Peninsula in general. Um, since this is the, the start of the series, I want to uh, show the build I'm going to be using for it. Uh, so I'm going to be using the Noble's S-Stock, uh, Frenzied Flame Seal with some incantations to go with it, uh, Buckler, Buckler shield for the the parry aspect, but uh, I could be using a, a parrying dagger, which would look a lot better. But I'm not that great at parrying, so we're going with the buckler and then the serpent spell. Uh, for the army, I just went with whatever seemed most to fit a traveler. So, and then for the talismans, just a dagger talisman for hopefully the uh, the repost from our parries, uh, some arrow talismans, and then a dragon caress shield. To have some damage negation. All right, so let's go ahead and start off. The first thing I notice in this area is right over here. There's a whole bunch of demi humans fighting uh, what seems to be Godric knights, and man, if you look at the battlefield even from here. You can see how soaked the ground is with blood. Yeah, and even though there's only is it one, two, three Godric Knights right there, I almost guarantee you they'll win against that fight. And then the Demi Humans seem to be stemming from this forest area right here, which it seems like everywhere Demi Humans are is all from a forested area because they're kind of hated by society, so they have to kind of run and hide everywhere. But if we come down here, I'm going to. Uh, Invisible so that we're not seen by these demi humans. Hopefully, not seen. But yeah, so it seems like their base camp is right down here. And, uh, from their, from their, uh, the demi human little lore excerpts we can find all over, uh, it says that they like. To, they they're mainly like to be around caves and beaches, um, but if we look across right here, we can see that there's some kind of ruins right here that it seems like they kind of want to be close to. If we look at our map, uh, that's the demi human forest ruins. Uh, so that's where we'll be going next after we cross the bridge of sacrifice. In this whole area, though, it seems like the Godric knights are Godric knights and the demi humans are contesting for this territory, especially with the bridge of sacrifice being right there. So this is a highly contested uh, area, and we'll see that when we get to the uh, Forest Lookout Tower. It almost makes you feel kind of bad for the Demi-Humans, like they're just kind of trying to have the little land that they do, and everyone's just taking it from If we come up here, we can find the Forlorn Hound Ever Jail, which, uh, if you want to fight him, you know, be my guest, but uh, in this video, we're not going to right now. Wow, you can see pretty much all of the uh, the Weeping Peninsula area on Limgrave and I'm coming upon the Bridge of Sacrifice right now, which, if it's your first time coming to this area, uh, it's a bit treacherous, so I like to take it on a horseback and try and avoid these, uh, these bolts as much as possible. There's also a Stone Sword key you can find right here at the end of it. 
coming towards the end of this bridge, we can find, well, she's dead for me, but there's an NPC here who tells you that her caravan, uh, the misbegotten, she was being escorted out of uh, Castle Morn in this caravan right here when the misbegotten attacked and turned against her. And so that's why we see this troll who's probably pulling the caravan and all these Godric knights who seem to have kind of given up on life. They don't seem to be missing any health, so maybe they're not too injured. Oh. Man, I'm bad at tracking. Oh, good, I swear. There we go. Could you imagine if I was just using a pairing dagger? It seems like such a cool build. At the back of this caravan, you can find a morning star. Um, you don't get eaten alive by the dogs or all these misbegottens that are just ripping these bodies apart. They're described as uh, hateful and bloodthirsty creatures, but I almost can't blame them considering how uh, badly or poorly they're mistreated by everyone around. Coming up on this area up here, um, seems like these hounds are drinking out of this water, and I wonder if it's just because they're thirsty or because um, you can actually find a Nicholas lily or a uh, Trina lily at the edge of this water, which uh, its description reads that it helps to almost like sedate the river is uh, using the potion. So I wonder if they're drinking that to calm themselves or, you know, they could just be thirsty. And up here is the forest lookout tower, which seems to be trying to corral the demi humans into not leaving this area. I mean, they're actually sniping them with this ballista. At the top of the forest lookout tower, you can find a special type of crossbow up there, too. There's also a grace right here. And then if you go up there, you can find a uh, one of the demi human, uh, demi -human beasts. As we go further on in this territory, we go further away from civilization and more into the demi humans territory. In this area over here is when you can find the demi human queen, which her staff reads that um, you can find it past all my garbage here. Yeah. Glintstone staff styled as a scepter, a gift once given to the dim humans to foster peace. It can be wielded by even those of low intelligence, sneered at by fools at the in the academy. So it seems like the the academy wanted to foster peace with the dim humans and thus gave them the staff. I'll try and give him some help with this guy. Cool. There we go. He can also drop a, a a knife that gives you some blood as well. So if you kill the demi human queen that's inside of there, she'll give you that staff, and then jump over this area right here. You can get the uh, shield of the guilty, which if we look at its uh, description. It reads, Shield made to venerate a maiden whose eyes were crushed by briars of sin before being reborn in these lands. Venerating the repose of the soul, the shield boosts focus. The briars can be used to attack foes. When I first read this, it kind of reminded me of Hyeda, the to be flame of frenzy maiden, because she is also blind. But I don't know, I, there's nothing solved that I can find anywhere about it. If you guys have any suggestions, uh, let me know in the comments below, because I'm. Uh, very curious. Also in this area, you can find the Earthbore Cave, which there's nothing um, really important or you know useful you can get in there. But if you're up for a challenge with fighting tons of rats and uh, rune bear, then by all means go ahead. This whole area is just full of demi humans. It's almost like they're well, it's their territory really, and they're being uh, blocked off by these Godric knights trying not to let them back into civilization. 
But uh, if we go up into this area, we can find the Ailing Village outskirts, the side of Grace here that we're going to be going to. Now, if you're here uh, kind of earlier in your playthrough, you may not have encountered the Frenzy Flame, but uh, you'll notice that this is not your typical village as soon as you encounter one of these rats that has been ailed with the Flame of Frenzy with his glowing yellow eyes. They're no different from normal rats except for that. Here behind me in this little hut right here, you can find a Frenzy Flame Shield. Which is just a wooden shield with the mark of the flame frenzy on it. They attack very slow. These guys are super weak, but they also are able to use the flame frenzy, so watch out for that. Because they can kill you quick. Uh-oh. That spell does a ton of damage. Okay. And if you go inside this church right here, you can find a ton of rats with, afflicted with the Flame of Frenzy who will slaughter you quickly if you're not careful. There we go. But the important thing is that when you go inside of this church, this corpse right here will give you the incantation, the Flame of Frenzy, which if you're in your early playthrough, it does an incredible amount of damage and doesn't use that much mana. Now, if we go back down here, Castlemore and Rampart, We're kind of back in this area where there's a couple different options that we can choose from. But this time, we can backtrack. Go up this area right here. We can choose to go up that, that one wall right there. Or straight back this way. In the distance, we can see the statue of Rosas, the Usher of Death, which, when activated, uh, he leads us towards catacombs. So automatically, we know that we're closing in out of catacombs right now. Uh, I've already activated him, so we can't do it again, but he's pointing just down towards that way, which, when we investigate further, it'll be the Impaler's catacombs. Um, inside, we can find uh, one of the uh, stone gargoyle things, the cat looking stone creature things. And um, if we defeat him, which it is a very hard boss fight, I'll tell you what, then uh, he'll give us um, the dim human ashes, which is very cool. Right over here, it seems like these sorcerers are summoning an alabaster lord. Um, this these gravity wells, it's like meteor magic sort of thing, kind of gives it away, but considering we're just a traveler right now in search of lore, I think we'll leave them be for time. This is one of those towers where you have to solve a secret to be able to get to the top. Um, it says you must find three wise beasts, so you have to go around, slaughter three innocent little spirit turtles, and then they'll let you inside the tower. At the top, you can find a memory stone. And jump off this cliff to your death, and then go right back up. Actually, I've never been up here in a playthrough before, so I'm interested to see turtle shell. Huh? And is there anything else? A warming stone. Get a shield. That's pretty cool. 
probably one of the spirits of those turtles that we found. But so so far in this uh in this traveler's journey, we've covered from the seaside rooms, the Aguil Lake South, all the way through the Bridge of Sacrifice, the Demi Human Forest, Ailing Village, down to Oritis's Rise. And uh, we're going to end the video here just before Castleborn. So we have about two thirds left of this Weeping Peninsula area to cover. Um, let me know in the comments below if you prefer to see this, uh, this area near the four Fourth Church of America or the Castleborn Lift uh, for our next, for our next uh, Traveler's Guide. All right. Thank you for watching, and until next time, have a good one.